Hey guys, I wanted to wait a little bit until we could get some more answers in here, but the Heroes AMA was done. Uh, it finished on March 6th, about 12 hours ago for me, but this video probably won't come out for a couple days, so no worries on that. I wanted to make sure that we could get the most important answers uh, and talk about those. There's been 1,500 comments and well over 100 answers. So I wanted to avoid showing you guys repeat answers, and I also wanted to avoid any really vague answers, and anything where they kind of just said, hey, we don't really know yet. Uh, and I wanted to focus primarily on the answers that are going to make a difference in all of the viewers' games. So let's get right into it. So to talk a little bit about this AMA, it is people from the live design team, the ranked play, balance, and matchmaking. Those are the ones that are really going to be focused on this. Some of the people here like Adam Jackson, Alex Nyman, they are on the balance team while we have other people like Kale Milker who's here who's the production director and several other people that are very high up in the Heroes of the Storm development team. So let's get started on the questions that I find are very important. To this one, we had a question from Ghost Dunk who talked a little bit about the experience changes and felt like after all of these changes since the Orphea patch, are these experience changes where everyone wants them to be? And he also covered a great analysis. If you haven't seen it, it was pretty interesting to show the different changes. And overall, Blizzard responded with several answers that pretty much came out to be, hey, we really like that, but uh, at the same time, we're still working on looking at the experience changes to see if this is where we want to end up on. And we will likely be seeing some smaller changes to how the experience does once we see a little bit more competitive play. On to the next question, what are the highest priorities for the game right now? K.O. Milker, the production director, came out and pretty much said design, balance, content, and technology were their primary goals, along with things like making improvements, changes, and additions to the game. So they want to keep bringing out characters, keep improving the characters and design of the game, as well as changing slight things to make the game a little bit better. They want to settle in on the new changes after they've moved some people away from the team. Uh, the majority of the people that are actually working on content are still on the team. Just some of the people in the social media side are not there anymore, which they believe that with this smaller team and the new direction that they're going in, they should be able to uh, still keep everything rolling as they want to. On to the next question. They, this person is asking about the guaranteed tank healer and ranged assassin in quick match matchmaking, and then they said that they reverted it. He's wondering, essentially, where are we standing on all of this? Blizz Zeus responded, he's the lead software engineer, he pretty much said something along the lines of, we like where we're at at the moment with quick match, where... It tries to get you a healer, a tank, and a ranged assassin. However, if it doesn't find this in two minutes, then they're going to expand it, and you can still get a group within a reasonable amount of time, as queue times are still extremely important to everyone. On to the next question. This person was asking about abusing Team League and playing with people that are much lower ranked, so you go against lower ranked players. And there was an answer that answers this and several other questions that are very similar. So let's go to the really long answer on this, which pretty much says that the way they're going to handle new ranked is after they do the merge of Hero League and Team League, they're going to make it to where you need to have 16 or more heroes, the accounts need to be level 50, and for parties that are 2, 3, and 4, they're limiting the, the spread between leagues to a max of two league spread, meaning that if one person's diamond, the lowest the other person can be is gold. If someone's grandmaster, or sorry, master, the lowest they can be is platinum. They haven't discussed how grandmasters can be handled, whether that's gonna be diamond or platinum. And as far as that, now, if you still wanna group up with your friends that are higher or wider version of ranks, wider variety of ranks, you can go with a party of five. And then what's gonna happen is that the ranks will just be ignored past a certain point. So if you're playing with four bronzes and a and a masters, what's going to happen is it's going to treat it as a full team of masters. But if you're going to play with like a masters and two or three plats and two or three gold, uh, it's going to just treat it as if the the golds weren't there. 
So that's essentially how this is going to be handled is they're just going to simply ignore the people. But you can still group up with your friends as long as you're with a party of five or your friends are all within two leagues of each other. This is actually a pretty cool answer to how they're going to handle the smurfing problem. And it doesn't punish teams too much for the teams that are still want to just play with their friends, even if you're a little bit in wider variety of ranks. On to the next question. Do you think it would be useful to have role icons near our names? And then he gave an example of this, which is a pretty neat example. For example, this player right here who's hovering the Rexar is able to play tank and bruiser. However, they, or sorry, would prefer to play tank or bruiser. They can't play support and they can get away with ranged assassin and specialist, but they're not great at those. And the same idea, we can see this, uh, this Hanzo player can only play ranged assassin. This tank player can only play tanks but can't play anything else. And this person can fill in for everything but support. It was a great idea that this person came up with. And Blizzard says that they're actually already working on something kind of like this. So when you get into a ranked game or a draft mode, you're going to be able to set a primary and secondary preferred roles on these rank screens so that people know what's your main role and what's a role that you can fill in if needed. This will be uh, some a feature that they want to have set up in the new rank changes, but they said no promises on having this out in March, but they will like it uh, to be out within the upcoming rank mode update. So that's their, their goal is to have it out during this time, but no promises. On to the next one. Someone asks the question, seriously though, how can we help? Kale Milker, again, the production director, came out and said, play the game, bring your friends, try healer and tanks more often, and spend gold on things that you actually enjoy. And spend shards, gold, gems, whatever. And then he says, finally, the end of this is be kind to each other and have fun together because that's what this is all about. And I think that's really the big thing is if we can keep the community in the game, keep playing the game, then this game will stay alive. And I think that's really where KO Milker wants us to be. Their dev team is still going to be churning out characters, maybe a little bit slower, still going to be churning out reworks. And we'll get to that a little bit later. On to the next question. We have a question from Germany that pretty much says, is it possible to have fixed teams per season? Teams of MMR, personal MMR. And that is something that they are thinking about doing. Uh, there was one other question. Did I miss it? Uh, this was on the... Oh, this something else. Never mind. I won't worry about that. Uh, they said that they're thinking about making a new team league where it's always groups of five. So teams that are being a little bit more serious might be able to get different rewards. On to the next question. With HEC ending, did you focus or did the balance team of the focus change? This has been asked several times and it's been getting different answers every time. Put simply, they said that there hasn't really been enough time since this for them to notice a major change, but they do feel like they have a little bit more freedom in the sense that they can buff a lot of underused talents and they're not worried that one's going to just absolutely dominate in, in the next tournament that comes out. So they feel like people are willing to do a lot crazier builds when there's not a pro scene to immediately say, well, the only the pros play this. So they, they feel like they don't have... Uh, they haven't noticed much of a change in their side, but they feel like people are more willing to play crazier builds, which allows them to uh, play around with a wider variety of talents is the general idea of how they answered that question. This person said, assuming ranked modes work, we've already talked about this. This person asked, uh, how do you feel about the state of the weird heroes in the game like Cho'Gal, Murky, Lost Vikings, and Abathur? And I really like Adam's answer to this question. He pretty much said that he likes weird heroes in the game and he doesn't want to make them feel less weird. He wants them to feel like they have a place in the game without ruining the fun, odd, weird, quirky factor about those characters. And he says the recent changes of Cho'Gall are examples of what we might see more of about possibly just buffing underutilized talents of weird heroes to get them a little bit more into the meta without them necessarily having to fit into one of the regular roles that we're seeing already. On to the next question. Someone asked uh, essentially the education side of the game, which is a question that I get asked a lot. Pretty much every time that I go on a podcast, someone asks me the question of how do we educate the player base? And I always say something along the lines of, you can't, like, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. 
And that's really the problem that I find a lot of times with education, educating the player base is we can't force anyone to watch any videos. We can't force anyone to learn about the game or how to play. So they asked the education side and they were like, what could we do about this? And this response from the developer pretty much said something along the lines of, um, we just want to make sure that quick match is kind of not necessarily forcing anyone into the teams, but uh, putting people in the teams that at least feel more natural. So people will kind of learn the game a little bit better just by simply playing the game the way that they have it set up. So it's pretty much mainly an answer in terms of we're going to try to make quick match and draft modes a little bit nicer for keeping good composition. And that's how they're going to solve that problem. On to the next question. New class roles. Are they still in the works? When will they be released? Starting with the new rank season. So guys, again, in March, that's when we're going to start seeing the new role system. On to the next question. Is there any chance for a Tassadar rework? Uh, and then he goes into hate being flamed. And someone responds with absolutely, while we're not ready to get into the specific details, uh, we can say that we're steering him towards the Spellcaster fantasy and the playstyle you'd expect of a High Templar. And they go a little bit more into the Legacy of the Void opening cinematics, and that's where they're drawing the inspiration for this character. So if you want to learn more about what possibly might be in the new Tassadar rework, feel free to check out the Legacy of Void opening cinematics. On to the next question. Will Chen ever see a rework? Or sort of balance. Uh, Adam responded with yes. And then they said any spoilers. And he said I don't want to give away any specifics. But so far the results have been staggering. And for people who don't know where that hint is coming from. Or what that hint means. In the game World of Warcraft. There is a style of monk. Or a talent spec of monk called Brewmasters. Brewmasters have similar abilities to Chen in the game, and they're considered the tanks, the main tanks of the, uh, the monk role. And these Brewmasters have a mechanic called Stagger, and what Stagger does is it will make it to where when you take damage, a percent of your damage is going to be mitigated and then spread out over the course of something like six seconds. So say you have a 50% Stagger rate, and you take 100 damage. You're going to take 50 damage, and then you're going to take 50 damage over the next 6 seconds. So saying that he's mentioning stagger in there means that there may be a staggering effect. Some people might be asking me, well, Paradox, why would we want to stagger our damage? Why wouldn't we just want to take it all at the same time? Well, staggering damage comes with a lot of benefits. One, it gives your healer more time to heal you, as you're going to start taking a lot of damage over time, meaning that if the damage would have killed you, instead you have 6 seconds before you might die. Two, the Brewmaster Monks tend to have three or four talents or abilities that allowed them to remove their stagger at some point. This will give Chen a more complex playstyle as you may be taking a lot of damage, building up stagger, and then using abilities to remove that stagger. You might even see some talents where you can push that stagger onto enemies where the higher stagger amount that you have, you might be able to do more damage or possibly put that damage over time onto the enemies. Not necessarily things that the Brewmasters have in World of Warcraft, but could be some neat talents to add into Heroes of the Storm. So with a new staggering mechanic, we could have an entirely different playstyle of Chen that is a little bit more entertaining. So if you'd like to know more about the stagger mechanic, feel free to look up really anything about Blizzard's, uh, or sorry, the Brewmaster Monks in World of Warcraft. On to the next question. Will the next update finally let us not lose ranked points in games where someone disconnected at the beginning of the game? Now, this is a question that has been asked five or six times and has received answers from different members of the team. And each of these different answers from the different members of the team kind of got a different answer. So I'm going to give the, the overall answer of they're working on this feature, but there's a lot of problems with the feature. And they're figuring out if this is actually a feature that they want, and they need to test out a variety of ways to do it. Uh, the response from Zeus essentially said, hey, we're still working on it and we want to polish it. But the response from KO Milker said something along the lines of, it's hard to implement this because there's so many different scenarios and problems and outliers that will have people complaining about this system similar to the performance-based matchmaking that we had earlier. So, for example, one of the 
weird scenarios that could happen is someone could be asking, uh, let's say you win a game and there was a lever on the enemy team. Do you no longer gain points? Well, how frustrating is that going to be if so often when you win games, you're not gaining any points? And it could make it to where if you really wanted to throw someone's games, when you play with them, you throw their game. And when you play against them, then you just disconnect your internet. Uh, we've seen Leon Black have an entire two weeks where people were purposely throwing games on his team and they were able to stay near his rank because they just won games at off hours. And then when they played with Leon Black, they just threw the games. To allow people to really punish people and abuse the system uh, if they're if they can cause the enemies not to lose point or not to gain points on a win. You could pretty much permanently lower people's points and this could be abused. Another option about this is just the fact that if they make it to where you gain points when you win a game against levers, uh, but you don't lose points when you lose a game with levers, it's going to artificially inflate everyone's MMR and everyone's rank. I mean, I guess not MMR, but everyone's rank is going to get artificially inflated and we're going to just have all everyone high rank based off how many people are leaving. So there's no real right answer to this, but overall, it is something that they're working on. They just don't expect it to be out by March. On to the next question. Let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, no competitive scene to worry about. We've talked about this already. And let's start scrolling through a little bit, and we're going to cover some of the other questions that we haven't got to. Uh, the ranked points, smurfing, and... Performance-based matchmaking, they said that is not something that they want to work on right now. Uh, however, they do want to still look at MMR and rank. A question that was asked a few times was, uh, are we going to be seeing the MMR numbers? And while that was supposed to come out for the March patch, they've actually changed that and announced that they don't want this to come out in the March patch. And they're actually not sure if they're going to do it at all anymore. Then we have a few other questions that were answered from some of these other ones. Let me just double check if there's anything that I missed. Uh, so the large nerfs and small nerfs is a question that Beg for Mercy was asking if they're ever going to be doing these uh, large scale nerfs or they're going to keep doing these small nerfs on different heroes. So if a hero comes out that's overpowered, kind of like the Hanzo and Maiev launch, uh, are we going to ever see really large nerfs? And overall, they really like to have the nerfs as smaller incremental because it's surprising. Sometimes people underestimate how much a small change can actually do. And I've actually talked to Adam about the same question, and he, he said that generally it needs to be something that is smaller, as that tends to work out a little bit better. On to the next question, how do you feel about Deckard Cain right now? Uh, Deckard Cain's an interesting hero. He says that he was a monster in high-level plays, and they're making an incremental changes to try to make him where he's going to work in all ranks of play without being overpowered in any rank, without him feeling underpowered in any rank. I think that's a pretty interesting way to answer it. Let me just double check. There isn't anything that I've missed. Primary criticism, uh, reduced player agency. A few people have talked about this. They want to try to switch quest talents to be more skill-based and asymmetrical in terms of power spikes throughout the game. So skilled players will get power spikes earlier. So he thinks that we may be seeing some more quests for heroes that might not necessarily be as difficult, but some quests that can give you an earlier power spike to the game. So I thought that was an interesting design decision on how they're going to handle quests. Ryokai, unfortunately, didn't get his question answered from what I can see. Um, what was Ryokai's question anyways? Uh, merging seems like the decay. Oh, so they did answer that they are likely going to be putting decay on all ranks now. Not all ranks, uh, all game modes now. So because they're merging Hero League and Team League, there will be decay for both of these uh, for this one new game mode is what was answered. And then on to this one, Thrall. Recently in development, uh, the quests everywhere, again, quest thing. They said that uh, this the quest they're going to be trying to make skill-based and so a very similar answer. Could you communicate on the feelings towards TL power leveling smurfs? They've We've already answered that. So I believe we're getting just into the repeats now. And so we've covered all the majority of the major questions that are being asked. So to overall cover all the information that is very important to know, uh, the things that we're seeing is we will be seeing the merged Hero League and Team League. They are combating Smurfs in several ways by making it to where the uh, 
groups, you're either not going to be able to group up with people that are too low rank or too high rank, or you're just going to make it to where it's going to ignore the lowest rank of the group. At the same time, they are looking at reworking Chen and Tassadar, as well as they gave us a little bit of insight on how they are going to be handling balance in the future. They said they want bigger balance patches more commonly, as well as they want uh, more incremental changes to heroes. They gave us some insight into how they want to handle quests. And so they want to make it to be more skill based and then give higher power spikes to people that are, are handling those skills earlier. And overall, that gives us a general idea of what we are looking at in terms of the Blizzard AMA. Now, if you guys would like me to do an Ask Me Anything, uh, let me know in the comments below. I might do an Ask Me Anything as well. Uh, I don't really know if there's as many things as people would be interested in. But if you guys are interested in it, I might do it on Reddit. I might do it on uh on live or Twitch or maybe even like YouTube live or something. I don't know. Let me know. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I know this one was pretty much just looking at letters the entire time. Letters and words, kind of boring. But thank you so much for watching. And feel free to check out any of my other videos. If you have any other questions that wasn't covered in here, I'm not going to promise that we can answer anything. But there might be things that have been previously answered that people could link you to the official answers. So feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and feel free to check out any of my other videos.